flip it over. You'll notice there's different compartments underneath. So the first thing you want to do is take the battery out. You'll see a little switch like this one. Push that up. Most of you will have the the long tubular battery going across the back. It's got the same kind of buttons on it. And then just pop that right out. But if you've got this type, then you push that button and pull out. And it'll come out. And spin this back around. The one compartment's for memory. You might need a little tiny screwdriver. And it'll lift right up. There's my memory. See, the hard drive is right here. Take these two little screws out. And there's my hard drive. Most of the newer computers now have a power switch on them. And before you unplug the power supply, or plug it in, you want to flick that switch off. Because any little spark created when you unplug this can fry this power supply. I mean, they're only like $35 for the power supply, but it's a real pain in the butt. The first thing you're going to want to do is take the covers off, and there's usually only two screws. So we'll take them screws out. Now to access your hard drive, you're going to have to pull both covers. Two on each cover is all you need. You don't have to take all these out. You see, you just kind of slide it back. Some of them move a little hard, some of them don't, but just slide it back and it comes right off. Slide this one off. It just slid right back. It's right there is your hard drive. And up there is your CD-ROMs. And those have two screws holding them in also. I like to use a magnetic screwdriver because some of these little screws are really get away from you and they're really hard to put back in. Take the other two screws out. You see a bunch of wires and cables in here. This is the IDE cable. You unplug the power. I already took the screws out of this one. Unplug the power. And then just kind of wiggle this back and forth, and it comes right out. And you can see, I hope you can see it, it's got the, uh, the little missing hole right here. It's got a plug in it right here, so you can't plug it in backwards. The pins on the, on the device you're plugging in is missing a pin also. But you notice on the cable... It's got a red red ribbon right here. That's always pin number one. Pin number one is always next to the power. And just slide the new one back in. Put the screws in, plug it in, and you're good to go. Go ahead and pull the power plug off your hard drive. Grab hold of the cable, just wiggle it back and forth, and it'll come off. And pull these two screws out. Just kind of pull it out of there. After you unplug the CD-ROMs, plug the CD-ROM cable into your hard drive. And that way you don't have to play with any jumper settings or anything like that. You could just use the CD-ROM powers to power it up. As I said, it's D-shaped. You can either just leave it hanging like that. Once you boot that up, the BIOS is going to detect your hard drive. And when you go to start Windows, it's going to detect that there's errors on your hard drive, and it should scan it. Now, if by chance it doesn't run scan disk by itself, then I'll show you what you can do. Just go to my computer, right-click, 
left click on explore and then when that opens you'll see a list of hard drives over on the left side here the hard drive from the computer you're in will usually be C drive and your will be D E F G but it will say local disk because it's a hard drive so you want to right click on that and left click on properties that actually shows you the statistics of your hard drive free space and all that good stuff you want to go up to the tools tab click on that and you'll see error checking and click on check now and then click on auto fix the system errors and if you can scan on this for attempt recovery of bad sectors but normally I wouldn't do that if you're just checking your hard drive because that actually takes a long time and then just click start you're going to get a pop-up that tells you it can't be for performed at this disk check utility because it needs exclusive access to the Windows files on the disk and just click yes and it'll reboot the computer and run the scan